If you can't get excited for Maryland, Indiana, I'm not sure what you can get excited for. This is WMUC Update with Maryland Men's Soccer. I'm Emily Olson, and this week I spoke with the charismatic keeper Cody Niedermeyer and Coach Sasha Surovsky. Last Friday, WMUC brought you a special broadcast live from State College where sophomore George Campbell lifted the Terps past Penn State with an unprecedented hat trick in Maryland's 4-3 victory over the Nittany Lions. George comes in at the, uh, the best of times. Uh, I love the kid with all my heart. He's one of my best friends on this team. So it's, it's been a struggle for him to stay healthy and keep healthy. And him being the player he is, he just keeps working hard. And him getting those three goals, I think, just kind of lifted the entire team as a whole because he's one of those guys that everybody loves. So him doing well kind of rubs off on everybody. Someone like George Campbell, you know, got a little healthier and was able to come through with some with some, some big plays. But I think the Northwestern loss really uh, humbled us and, and got us back to, uh, you know, competing a little harder and a little bit longer in games. We still haven't played our best soccer as far as I'm concerned. I still think uh, that's something that uh, is, is still a work in progress. And you know, our goal now is to play a full 90 minutes. Uh, you know, Penn State, we didn't play a full 90 um, and I think it's time that we start putting together full 90s. Maryland is slowly becoming that full 90 team after a devastating 2-1 overtime loss to Northwestern on a rainy Friday afternoon. The Terps rallied to put together two victories in the last two games. Uh, I think I think it's just the team coming together. I just a couple team meetings here and there with the coaches, without the coaches, just talking about what we need to do to, I mean, change how things were going. And I mean. The last couple of games, it's worked out pretty well for us, even though we come out slow, but you know, hopefully we'll keep going in the right direction. Last year, Maryland found a 13-game winning streak wearing their bright yellow kits. Call it superstition or routine, but after the loss to Northwestern this year, the Terps called for a wardrobe change. Uh, it's the magic yellow jerseys. Uh, last year, they proved to be good for us, so once we went back to them, we started winning a couple of games, so yeah, why stop something when it's not broken? Another constant for Maryland is their strong tradition of leadership. In the past, Maryland has relied on standout players to lead the team. This year, the Terps look to their seniors. Part of good leadership is ownership, and I think, uh, you know, we, we lost two potential leaders in Zach Steffen and Mike Ambrose last year, but you know, certainly Mael Corbeau uh, is, is, uh, is, has become one of our great leaders, but Subasa has been special in the last few games. He's taken on a, a tremendous ownership and leadership role. Uh, you know, Dakota Edwards has been a fantastic leader for us. He's been a great senior. He hasn't been in the minutes, but my God, in the locker room on the sidelines, he's been a tremendous leader. And David Kabelik has come through. So I think all of our seniors have played pivotal roles right now. Um, and, and we're getting some of our young guys getting a little more accustomed to the college game. And, and you're going to see, you know, I mean, you're going to see them even come through a little bit more. So um, I like where we are, and I like the fact that we haven't played our best soccer yet. So I, I think that we're, we're getting close to, to finding that, that special zone uh, where we can get into, and I think that can take us a lot of places. That special zone comes from teamwork and competition at practice. Niedermeyer has started all but two games in net, but still benefits from the competitive practices. Uh, Dan and I, we push each other. I mean, every day it's, it's tough to see who's going to do better and whatnot. So I think that's, that's what's made me play pretty well. And I know it's making us both better as goalkeepers having that competition. And it's like that at every position on the field. And Sash makes sure of that. So you're always working to start. This Friday, Maryland will take on yet another Big Ten rival. You know, we've played one game more than, uh, than a few of the teams. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a solid situation, but we're not taking anything for granted. Uh, you know, uh, if, if you lose your next three games, you can still finish last and you're playing the 8-9 game. So, um, you know, when you get into conferences like the Big Ten, the ACC, um, you know, one win, one loss can, can mean three or four spots in the standings. So uh, there's a lot of parity in the league. And, uh, you know, right now our focus is, is try to be prepared and, and provide an A game against Indiana, which is what we'll need to beat them. This, this, is, a, this is a great matchup with a lot of history, a lot of pride. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, I'm just excited for this. I think it's one of those games that, that you know, if you can't get excited for Maryland, Indiana, I'm not sure what you can get excited for. Maryland hosts Indiana this Friday at 7.30 p.m. in a clash of two Big Ten Titans. The, the players need to be focused on, on the moment, on now. Um, I think uh, Indiana's history speaks for itself. I think our players are aware of their success, and uh, the, the returning players know the quality they have from last year. The new players know of Indiana's legacy, and... Uh, but they also know what it means to be a Maryland soccer player. Uh, right now, our 100% our sole focus is on 
on uh, you know being as prepared as we can for the Indiana game on Friday. This is a, a, a massive game against a, a great opponent. Um, you know, one that I feel uh, is is a top ten team in the country. Uh, in spite of a couple of tough losses in the in the Big Ten this year, they've uh, they're an exceptional team with uh, some great attacking players and. Uh, we, we need to be ready for Friday rather than thinking about anything else. The mindset's just, I mean, respect Indiana. I mean, they've had the history, and between us both, it's you know it's going to be a tough game. Um, nobody's going to sit down and accept a loss in this game, so it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a battle. Um, we just got to go out and do what we've been doing, and I think we'll be all right.